The X-Men are over. If you haven't seen what's been going on in the Krakoan era of the X-Men, it is coming to an end with the fall of X, and it starts right here. The X-Men have an island that they've moved on to. Onto this island, they've created their own government, religion, and even medical supplies. They are a sovereign nation, and on top of that, they have the ability to resurrect themselves from a death, a discovery that was placed out into the world during the Judgment Day event. Once a year, they also hold the Hellfire Gala, where the heads of state arrive in a sore array of political discussions and everyone drinking themselves into a stupor. Also, for the sake of today's story, Miss Marvel died protecting Mary Jane from death in the Spider-Man book. With that knowledge, I think we're ready to enjoy the story where all the X-Men die. This is Comic Story, and I take current comic books and break them down into an audio drama, allowing you to know what is going on in the world of comics so that you know what to add to your collection. There was a moment in time where the world lost a hero, and then later, that hero was reborn. Most would see this as a wonderful thing. Others may be concerned with the ethics and morals of those who could bring back the dead. However, for Kamala Khan, Neither of those things were on her mind as she reawoke. The real question is, is she really a mutant? It was through Cerebro that Professor X was able to determine that Miss Marvel was in fact a mutant, which is how he was able to create a backup of her upon her untimely death. It was difficult for Kamala to process not only that she died, but that she was in fact a mutant. But Cyclops told her that she can take as much time as she needs to understand everything and that she'd always have a home on Krakoa. Other mutants, like Emma Frost, wanted to announce to everyone that Cerebro identified her as a mutant at the upcoming Hellfire Gala, while some wanted Kamala to make the decision herself. You see, the Hellfire Gala was a celebration where mutants were welcoming their human friends to see the marvels that the mutants had created, and be a part of the selection process to welcome a new team of X-Men. But just before the events could fully get underway, an alarm sounds at the treehouse, calling some of the older members away. Nonetheless, the festivities continue as Kamala learns a little more about herself through Professor X. He tells her that it doesn't take a telepath to see that she is uncomfortable. Kamala says that she's just a bit guilty because she's so unsure of how to even approach this topic. Professor X says that the reason that they'd hoped for her to announce her mixed heritage is so that it might help calm the minds of those that fear them. A being that is an inhuman and a mutant? That would be a marvel. But just as Cyclops told her before, she can take all the time that she needs before joining them. There was one question, though, that Kamala had. Is her embiggening the mutant power? Professor X explained that her encounter with the Terrigen Mist is what made her inhuman before her mutant powers could manifest. It is possible that the mist suppressed her potential power, but they will certainly need to take a closer look. And just as everyone begins to settle in for the X-Men announcement, the Avengers get a distress call from Steve Rogers about a situation in DC. Even with some of their protectors now gone, Jean Grey calls for the attention of the Soiree, telling everyone that they are about to begin the nomination process, and that she is happy to say that she won't be leading this new group of X-Men. The ones leading will be Sink and Talon. It takes only a few moments for everyone to telepathically cast their votes. And once everyone has done so, Jean says that she would like to now welcome their new X-Men. Along with Sink and Talon, they have Cannibal, Progeny, Frenzy, Dazzler, Jubilee, and to some people's surprise, Juggernaut. Because nobody can stop the Juggernaut. And just as they were announced, the team is only short-lived, as Nimrod bursts in, killing some of the newest members before they even had a chance. Magic quickly gets ready to teleport all of the humans and the five out, but Orcus employs every tool at their disposal, and her being infected with their nanotechnology prevents her from using her powers. Iceman tells everyone to back up while he takes care of Nimrod, and he makes a valiant effort. But Nimrod infects him with a virus that ultimately negates his X-Gene. This causes Iceman to melt and dissolve away. With one Omega-level mutant down, Nimrod turns his attention to the other, Jean Grey. But she's already preparing an attack to keep him busy. Using her psychic powers, Jean launches Juggernaut at Nimrod with enough force to remove him from the gala. It wasn't long before the rest of Orcus's forces came. Previously, just a single Stark Sentinel has nearly succeeded in killing the X-Men. Now, the mutants are facing them all. It is now that we see the true antagonist making his appearance. 
Dr. Stasis, a clone of Nathaniel Essex, or as many know him better, Mr. Sinister. Professor X declared that he would pay for this, but Stasis has so much more planned, and he allowed Professor X to see it all in his mind. Not only was he leading an attack on Krakoa, but he was also hiding away in pharmaceutical factories where the mutants' medicines were made. They're all poison. The medicines that the mutants are giving the humans are poison. But to really explain what it is that he's done, he'd like to introduce Modok. Modok appears telling everyone, I'd like you all to pay attention to the humans who have taken your medicine. And he presses a button that sends all of the humans who have taken it into a frenzy, attacking and killing each other. Not only did Orcus hack into the Krakoan medicine, but also their transit system that is the Krakoan gateways. More Orcus soldiers are now pouring in, and the X-Men are fighting back as much as they can. And they even begin to gain footing combating these threats. But Nimrod was left alone for too long. And while killing Juggernaut, he destroyed the giant pillar that held up the Hellfire Gala. With a thunderous boom, it rings out as Jean grabs a hold of everyone, assuring them that they are not the ones at fault here, that it is Orcus that is choosing violence. However, Stasis has one more trick up his sleeve as one more unexpected person steps out of the gateway. This person managed to approach undetected through Jean's psychic hold, and because of that, Jean Grey is stabbed in the back as Moira Taggart stands up shouting to Charles, Look at me! Look at what I've done! Jean struggles to recover. What was on that dagger? And Moira says that it was a little something that they found on a place called Otherworld. She believes that they call it Blight's Will. The remaining mutants rally together to try and stop her, but Moira is quicker than them with a robotic body, taking Professor X hostage, telling everyone to stop. Do it, or I'll have MODOK activate the virus in every human who has taken your medicine. With no other choice, Professor X stops everyone in their place. I surrender. Now with the floor open, Dr. Stasis says, I have some terms that I'd like to go over. We've hacked more than just your medicines. We've also hacked your gates. And right now, they all point off Earth. We will kill no more humans so long as the mutants leave Earth. Professor X tells him that he could never get all of the mutants to agree to simply walk off the Earth forever. And Moira says that he might want to try. Make them walk or every drop of blood spilt will be on your hands. Stasis says that there will be consequences should he go back on his word. The first time you disobey us, Charles, we'll kill a human. The second time, we'll kill ten. Then a hundred. You get where this is going, right? While Dr. Stasis is giving his ultimatum, Jean uses the last of her abilities to reach out to Firestar. She tells her that she has a plan. They have to think bigger. They can make Dr. Stasis think that he's recruited her. So the two come up with a story, one that she has defected and come over to Dr. Stasis, which allowed him to launch this attack. At first, Firestar isn't sure, but seeing the weight of it all, she agrees. But back with Professor X, he's back against the wall. He agrees to the terms, telling all of the mutants that they must go through the gate. They may not know why, but he will explain soon enough. Just know that by doing this, they are not only saving themselves, but human lives as well. Meanwhile, there's one other person at play behind the scenes. Mother Righteous has been working on locking away Krakoa, removing it completely from the Atlantic Ocean. And though many of the mutants try and resist Professor X, most of them end up going through the gates. Over with Cyclops, he's currently suffering from a trap that was sprung in the treehouse. He lays it beaten and bloodied, but that's not what he's most scared of. While laying there nearly dead, it's that Jean visited him one final time before her passing. She told him goodbye. Before long, the only mutants who haven't stepped through the gates were those trained specifically by Professor X to resist his persuasion should he ever be compromised, all quietly chanting, resist. Emma is the first to break control, telling everyone to grab hands so that lords can teleport them away. Moira gives the order to kill the others, but before she could use Professor X as leverage, the mutants disappear. However, even teleporting them away, lords suffered her own injuries passing away shortly. With Orcus seemingly victorious, one of the humans sees an article on his phone that there was an attack at the Hellfire Gala with no human survivors. Stasis laughs. <laughs> Can you believe it? 
Our PR department sent out the press early. Too early. Whoopsie. This is awkward. Guess we just need to kill all the humans. Professor X yells for him to stop shouting that he did what he asked, but his pleas go unheard or rather ignored as the soldiers begin to mow down every human that was there. With only Professor X remaining, Moira holds her knife to his throat, telling him, everything that has happened is your fault. Tonight going forward, people will refer to this as the Mutant Massacre. You sold laced medicines, invited Nathaniel Essex onto the island, and he almost ended the Earth. I could go on, but your dream is dead, and humanity will cheer for us as we capture and kill all of you. Professor X stands ready for Moira's attack, and it's Rogue, who is called away with the Avengers, who bursts through the ground, ripping Moira's mechanical body apart. Moira yells to stop her, but before anyone could react, Rogue grabs Professor X, escaping. She tells him that she is taking him to Steve. Steve Rogers is reforming the Unity Squad. They still have friends! Professor X begins to realize that something else is very troubling, and demands that she bring him to the island. Rogue wants to know what's wrong. They're gone. Rogue, our mutant family, everyone who walked through those gates, they were meant to go to Araco. But I can't reach them, any of them. They're all gone, all of them. They're all dead. Rogue stops setting him down. There was a quarter of a million mutants on Krakoa. They all can't be gone. Professor X slams his fist into the ground. They are! I made them walk through the gates. I didn't know. I didn't know Orcus would do this. I pushed them into the meat grinder. They're all dead, all of them. And I was the one who killed them. Leave me. Go avenge them. Avenge Krakoa. And there you have it. The Hellfire Gala has kicked off the fall of X. I know we don't cover a lot of X-Men here. I haven't done it in a little while, but I have been following the X-Men books and I really enjoy what they're doing here. If you liked this, let me know in the comments down below. And before you go ahead and comment, oh, they're all going to come back. I don't know. They did this once before, like 20 years ago, and this might be the time to prune the X-Men. Do you think that this is time to prune them, or do you think it's all going to end with everyone coming back? Because this is kind of all over the place. They just lost everything. They can't bring people back. All the people are gone. Half the X-Men are out of there. And if you're wondering about Wolverine, there was a scene where he was battling against a bunch of stuff. He's somewhere. I don't know where. He wasn't on Krakoa. I haven't covered the end of the Wolverine storyline yet, and we're going to very soon. But at the end of that, he left Krakoa. That's coming out like this week or next week because you need to know where Wolverine is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. And if you want early access, join us at YouTube memberships or over at our Patreon. And I'll see you next time right here.